I am Father Michael MacDonald, parish priest of St. Michael's Arkenneth and St. Mary's Bornish on the island of South Uist. And one of the things that struck me when I came here 20 years ago now is that I was, for the first time in my priesthood, serving in an almost entirely Catholic environment uh, with a small number of people who were members of other Christian denominations. But on the whole, everybody who I had to do with each day was a parishioner of mine or a parishioner of one of the neighboring parishes. And I've been very fortunate in that I have the two oldest churches in the islands here as part of my parishes, St. Michael's Kenneth, which we're in at the moment, and also St. Mary's Bornish. St. Michael's Kenneth is unusual because it's, in my estimation at least, built on the site of a shrine of St. Kenneth himself, one of the Celtic saints who, as far as historical research is concerned, indubitably came to South Uist itself. We're surrounded by place names um, which indicate the devotion to the ancient Celtic saints and indeed some of the Viking saints. Near here is Kilolai, which is named after St. Olaf, who is very definitely a Viking saint. This particular church was built in 1828 by Father Charles, by Father James MacGregor, rather. And James MacGregor came from the Spittal of Glenshee in Persia. He was educated in the college in Lismore, on the island of Lismore. And he came here as an agricultural improver. If one was to read his obituary in the Catholic directory, you'll find that he came with dynamite. And he pot-blasted all the land here and created the dry stone walls, which currently are still in existence. I am a priest farmer, is one way of looking at it. I'd be one of the few in Scotland who actually does have his own sheep and his own lambs. And I have a tenancy here um, from South U.S. Estates, which the priest has had for something over 200 years. And so we're quite unique and our parish here was the centre of controversy in the 1950s with the proposal to build the rocket range, um, which is currently still in use, although its purpose has changed to a test and evaluation centre. And at that time, in the early 1950s, when the proposals first came out, the priest whose name was Father John Morrison, but was universally nicknamed and known as Father Rocket, he it was who started the devotion to Our Lady, which manifested itself in the wayside shrines, which are around this part of South Uist, and also manifested itself finally in the erection of the statue of Our Lady of the Isles on Rueval. The title Our Lady of the Isles was obtained officially from the Pope in the mid-1950s, and it was um, applied to the statue on Rueval. The statue now has become an iconic representation of the island of South Uist, and it's also a site of devotion. Twice a year, in October and in August, we go there and we have the recitation of the rosary um, each on the Sunday nearest to the Feast of the Assumption and one of the Sundays in the month of October. I think, too, that another thing which is interesting is that the wayside statues are looked after by the community. They're not actually owned by the church. And it is the people, the crofters who live in the vicinity of each of these statues who look after them and maintain them. And they take great pride in looking after them. There is a, 
I feel a sense of devotion in the way in which these are all looked after in, in the, the manner in which they are. These rural communities are important historically, but they also have a very vibrant faith um, in the present time. And indeed, the church here, which is, um, if you look at it closely, has not only got um, Stations of the Cross, which came from the middle of the 19th century, and these were imported from Italy and are on copper with um, wooden frames that were added in England when they came over. But also we have representation of Christ the High Priest on the cross. And above here, we have a modern painting by Michael Gofeder, our local resident artist of Columba, St. Michael, and Our Lady, which is very dramatic. And so the church's presentation of devotion in art changes and evolves through the different eons in which the church exists. And I think that we can fruitfully and uh, look at and, and learn from much of this historic evidence which is around us. I feel here that in the U.S. we're, as it, as it were, planted in the middle of a heritage which is rich, which is different, which is um, connected too deeply to the mysteries of creation and indeed to the whole devotional life of the church, much of which was collected in the late 19th century by people like Father Alan MacDonald or also by uh, Carmichael who collected them and recently two devotions put together by Father Ross for the Novena for St. Columba follows on in the same tradition that we've had uh, exemplified in these ways in the past. So I see it as a growing tradition, a deepening tradition, a tradition which is continuously rediscovering and bringing out things both old and new. In the garden and the grounds here of Arkenneth, we have side by side sort of interesting things. We have the, the lime kiln from which the, the lime was uh, uh, burnt in order to create the cement which went to building the church in the 1820s. Then we have Father McGregor's big stone that he got on his horse and which he fell off in 1867 and died subsequently. So these are all important historical objects. And we also have the original statue carved by Hugh Lorimer of Our Lady of the Isles in sandstone um, before it was sized up to become the statue that we have in Rueville today. We're standing here beside the first statue, which was carved by Hugh Lorimer himself. It's carved out of sandstone, and it is the what they call the maquette for the larger statue, which is up on the hill in Rueville, the one which is internationally known. Uh, Hugh Lorimer was given the commission by Father John Morrison, who incidentally was nicknamed Father Rocket because of his opposition to the rocket range, which, which was proposed in the mid-1950s. Part of the commissioning work was as a result of the celebration of the Holy Year in 1954, and the main statue was, um, as they say in Gaelic, opened in 1958 on the Feast of the Assumption. They talk about it as the opening of the statue, which is quite an interesting way of describing it. It was a great occasion. They had the territorial army were there, the first communicants, the confirmandi, and none other than Archbishop Heenan, who became Cardinal Archbishop of Westminster. He was a personal friend of Father John Morrison's. And all of these people were present on the day of the opening of the statue. This was done by Bishop Grant, who didn't live much longer. He, he lived only for a year after that. And the story goes that it cost £12,000 to build the statue, to, to pay for the statue rather, on Rueval, an enormous amount of money in those days. And it took quite a long time before the debt was finally paid. But I think that today, looking back and looking at the statue today and its iconic representation of the South Uist as well as the faith of the people of South Uist, it was money well spent. Ha <laughs>
Sun Gadishen Fur O Yasahik Kamiritra Afato Maramatie Akafakaram Kanji Kanwa Smith of the